Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. But 10 seconds before we get started, I made this video to help you, so please help me if it helps you. It only takes a second or two, it's a great help if you subscribe, like, and or leave a comment down below. That's it, let's get started. So today I'm going to be showing you how to replace your front brakes on your 95 through 2002 Mazda Millennia. Alright, and here's the set of tools that I use for today's project. I got a 3 8 ratchet, an extended 3 8 ratchet, a half inch drive ratchet, a 17 millimeter socket, a 19 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter socket, a breaker bar to take your lug nuts off, a digital caliper measuring tool, uh, two flathead screwdrivers, and your C clamp. Okay, guys, and a good place to lift your car here, I'm gonna show you right under here, is the tow guy right there. So find that guy right there and you see I got my jack there. I'm going to lift up right there where the toe spot is. And a good place to put your jack stand is going to be right down here. Oh, and it's going to be right um, along that little steel area where you can see the spot welds. Um, so you can just, once you've got your car jacked up, you can place your jack stand right underneath there. And the next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and uh, take your lug nuts off with your 19 millimeter lug nut taker offer and make sure you break them loose before you lift your car. Okay guys, and once you've got your wheel off and you're looking right about here, we're going to come over to this side and we're going to take a look at your caliper. And the next thing we got to do is take off the two caliper bolts. So here we are at your caliper and we have these two bolts here and this is where you're going to take your 17 millimeter socket, go ahead and put it on there with your 3 8 ratchet and we'll go ahead and remove these two bolts. Okay and after you've got your two bolts out here what you're going to do is take a big flathead screwdriver, kind of stick it in there, final place to stick it in there and then you're going to wedge back on there on your caliper so what you're doing there is you're compressing the piston in the caliper so now you should be able to pull your caliper right off because you've compressed it, you've compressed those two pistons back just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and set it on top here and then I'm gonna get you a better angle on these pads. Now once you've gotten here what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these pads off and if the, your clips come off um, well they won't really get them off um, maybe the thing off there. so we're gonna take them off there and we're gonna set them off to the side now once you've got here you must measure the rotor here before you can put some new pads back on. So grab you a tool like this or something similar to this. These are some caliper measuring tools. And I always have to explain this because I don't have the tool. I, I need to go out and just get the tool. And I'm going to do that eventually here. But you need to get the calipers where there are points sitting out here on the end. So it kind of grabs down like that. Because a lot of times there will be a rust ledge here. And they need to reach around that. So... But uh, just for the sake of learning or whatever, I'm going to show you guys here uh, how to use it. What you're going to do is you're going to go over just like that, and you're going to close down on it. Then I'll tighten it down there. I'll just come over like that. And then I'm going to look, and right now, I'm looking right here. It says it's at uh, 27 millimeters, over 27 millimeters. And the minimum thickness for these rotors is 26 millimeters. So, if you measure your rotors... And this is for the 01 to 02 Mazda Millennia. I don't know if the rotors, I believe the rotors are different for the 95 to 2000 Mazda Millennia. But if you have the 01 to 02 Mazda Millennia, your minimum thickness will be 26 millimeters for your front rotors. And so these are 27, so these are fine. I can put the pads back on here and drive it down the road. But if it's below 26 millimeters, then you will need to. Uh, purchase new rotors. You can't resurface them because obviously if you resurface them you're just taking more off and you're just going further down so it's unsafe to drive at that point. So now I'm going to show you how to replace your rotor if you need to do that too so we'll, t we'll take a look at how to get this bracket off and replace your rotor. Okay and now that you're going to remove your rotor what you're going to do is first we need to get this bracket off so We've got two 20 mil, 21 millimeter bolts sitting right here. So you're going to go ahead and get your socket and put it on there and remove both of these bolts right here. 
Okay guys, so once you're getting that last bolt off here, you're just going to take it out like so. It's going to come out, and this just slides right off, and then we'll just set it right down here. Okay, and next thing, make sure your caliper here is not sitting on top of your rotor like that, but just set it off here and make sure it's uh, sitting completely on your knuckle and dust shield so that when we take the rotor off, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, fall off there and possibly hurt your hose. So you may have a screw in there. I believe I was the last one to do these, so I didn't put the screw back in. You don't need the screw back in because when you put your wheel back on, as long as everything goes back flush, the lug nuts are going to squeeze that and put that flush back on there. But for some reason, Mazda chose to put a threaded hole here and a screw there. So if you feel like you must, go ahead and put that screw back in. Um, I don't like them because they can a lot of times be really difficult to take off. So if I get it off, I keep it off. So now once you've got that screw off, all you got to do is take it like this and just pull it off. And now your wheel hub is exposed. So uh, that's all that you really have to do to take everything off. Now, here in just a minute, I'll show you putting uh, pretty much everything back on. I'll show you the important things that you need to know. I'm not going to go step by step really, but I'll show you the, the important put back on steps here in just a minute. Now, after you've got your rotor and your brake pad bracket back on, what you're going to do is before you can put your new brake pads back on, what you got to do is compress these two pistons back. So you're going to take your old pads and then you're going to take a C-clip like this. And then you're going to, I'm going to take it back here and then I'm going to stick it right on there. And then I'm going to tighten up on the C-clip. And what that'll do is that'll push these two pistons back. And you want to try to kind of get it in the middle there, not like me out to the side. And then you'll tighten it up and it'll push both those pistons back. And then your caliper will be ready to it'll be ready to accept the new pad so when you try and put it back on you're not going to be held up by the two pistons back here okay guys and with your new pads what you're going to want to do is take some high temperature brake grease just kind of dab a little bit on there on the ends here and that's going to uh, assure that your brake pads slide back and forth correctly and um, it's going to prevent noise and all that good stuff so I'm just going to set them back in right here, kind of set down in these slots, just like that, and I set in there, and then you'll do the same with your other one, just apply the high temperature brake grease on each side there, and then, oh, my back plate just fell off there, and then make sure the, one, the pad with the wear indicator, which is that thing right there, is on the back for your driver's side brakes. Okay guys, and one of the last things you're going to need to do before we put everything back together is take your caliper bolts and kind of wipe them off there nice and clean. Then um, it's necessary, it's a good thing you're going to apply some high temperature breakers and it's a good thing for you to do this every time you take these bolts out. And what this actually does is this is what allows the, the whole caliper piece here to slide back and forth. So if you don't clean this and if it's got a bunch of crud on it, then it could um, it could mess with the, the brake pad wear and it could do bad things to your brakes. So just make sure you have fresh grease going on this bolt right here. And then we're now ready to put the caliper back on and the two caliper bolts back in. Okay, so now I'm going to take my caliper here and I'm just going to set them over this like so. Make sure these two rubber things on both sides are straight. Then we're going to take our lubed caliper bolts. And remember here, I don't have this one lubed yet, but um, remember, there's going to be one bolt with nothing on it. It's just going to kind of be a straight bolt. Then the one that I have lubed up here, as you can see at the top, there's like this little plastic piece that kind of spins. Um, and it just it looks different than this bolt right here. So remember, if you're on your driver's side, the one with the thing at the top is going to go in up here at the top. So I'm going to push that in there and make sure you don't um, push that down or anything. So just remember which bolt comes out of which side if it comes out the top or the bottom because on the driver's side it could be on the bottom. I doubt it. It'll probably be on the top. But just remember the way it comes out, put it back in um, the way it comes out. So if it comes out uh, on the top, put it back out. 
put it back in um, from the top and uh, vice versa. So that pretty much sums up all the stuff that's required to remove and replace your brakes on your 95 through 2002 Mazda Millennium. I thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. Oh you guys and one more thing before I forget. Whenever you do a brake job, make sure before you back out or anything or you pull up, whatever you're going to do, before you move the car, uh, apply your brakes. Push it. It's going to go all the way down to the floor and just kind of pump them up until you feel the brake pedal harden up. Because if you don't do that, you can hit anything that's in front of you or behind you the first time you go to drive your car. So just remember, you're not going to have brakes unless you do that pumping up thing um, before you drive your car. So, uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Well guys, unfortunately that's all the time I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I did making it. And fortunately, you can catch me again right here on Facebook tomorrow on my next video. Just don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave lots of comments down below. Well, thanks again guys for watching, and see you tomorrow right here on Facebook.